I'm in the wilds of St. Juan with uh, Dougie Richardson, and we're talking about farming, obviously with a Brexit angle. Tell me what you know. Well, um, what I know about Brexit is, um, is that, as far as I'm concerned as a Jersey farmer, um, we, we're in good, we're in, we're in, we're in, we're, we're, we're in safe hands, um, I believe, with uh, Sir Philip Bullish and his team and um, the various civil servants in the, in the various roles uh, involved in it. Uh, it looks as if um, they've, they've, they seem to have a very good understanding of our industry and all the issues. And so from that point of view, I think going forward, um, we, can, we can be as confident as we can be that uh, they'll do a good job on our behalf. Have you actually spoken to that team, the, the negotiating team? or I've, I, I've um, Not the actual negotiating team, but we went, we went to a presentation um, that, uh, that Sir Philip gave with his team um, and listened, and we've submitted, as a farmers union, we've submitted um, some of our sort of um, concerns, um, but they already knew those concerns anyway, which is very reassuring. Mm. And so um, uh, we're, we're, we're confident that... Um, that our, our best interest will, will be served. How many farmers do you know that share your view? How many farmers are in the Farmers Union, for example, that support oh, well, that? that? Certainly, certainly um, the, the council um, are more or less of that opinion, right. um, that, that we're certainly well served. Um, because I'm trying to get, regard. how many farmers are there still actually farmers, or farmers or growers, I use the word loosely, kind of the number of dairy farms, for example, it's a very small number of dairy farms now. Well, I, I, I read, um, if my memory says, it's something like 27, I think, um, farms on the island. I'm not sure if that's dairy farm, um, including dairy farms, but it's something of that order, um, right. like 27, 30. What would you, count, if somebody's got a patch of ground and they grow potatoes on it, what, at what stage do they become a farmer as far as you're concerned? How big do they have to be to become a farmer? Does it matter? Uh, I think I think it, it depends who, who's 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 doing the classifying on that one, and and for, and for what purpose. But it, it, you can be a farmer just working. Because I can't quite grasp versions. now, because one of the there's two main companies doing the Jersey Royals under the Jersey Royal name. One's a Scottish company, and one's an English company. But one of them doesn't actually do the farming; they just buy well, they're the both produce. Scottish companies. As both Scottish? Oh, are yeah, they both yeah, Scottish? Yeah. yeah. They just buy the produce, or they they don't seem to actually do the farming themselves. So no, Jersey, Jersey Royal is a fully integrated uh, company that does grow, right? And um, and the other company, Bartlett's, who we grow for, right? Um, op operate um, by us doing the growing, right? And they, and, the, and they do the selling. I mean, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen under Brexit, but the, the fact that you say that I thought only one was a Scottish company because obviously we don't even know what's going to happen to Scotland, do we? Under the UK scenario, as far as Brexit's concerned, could that be a scenario which might cause problems? The fact that they're Scottish companies? No, because these 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 companies they've got they've got offices in 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 the UK as well, with it, so it's it's not really an issue. No. no. The selling of your products, because I remember going to again Barclays, I think it was, I went to a talk when they first came over here, and they said the Jersey Royal name was well known in France, and they were really going to push marketing in France. But it certainly wasn't my perception that the Royal name was known in France. And I don't know, I don't know whether that's something they've done, have they pushed the Jersey Royal in France? There, has been, there have been some sales in France, mm -hmm. um, but they've been very limited. Right. And I can't comment any more than that, only that I know that they are limited. I mean, you've got some very innovative ideas yourself about marketing. Jersey potatoes. I do. Is that supported by the industry generally, or is that just your own initiative? Um, it, it, it's uh, some some of my ideas at the moment are my, are my ideas, right? Um, and um, they um, they they kind of garnish um, a little bit of support, but obviously, you know, ideas are one thing, action is another. Because we, I mean, I, at the Farman Conference I went to, the last one, they were t saying about the actual demand for potatoes is diminishing. There's all these other products available, rice and all the different things that people are eating now, pastas and different things. The, the actual sales of potatoes are diminishing. Is, it, is that something you know of, as far as the Royal concerned? Is it a, an expanding market? It's, no, it, 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 they have been falling. Um, people's um, lifestyles have changed. And, and we just have to, we just have to, in a, in a, if I can say it rightly, innovative, is that the word? Or yeah. well, we have to innovate um, to um, attract people to, to buy the product. And um, we've had some success locally with our product, and um, we've, we've certainly 
uh, brought people back to buying royals that weren't buying them right. for, before for various reasons. Right. And they are buying them now, and um, that was quite heartwarming. As far as the potato is concerned, do you see the royal as being the product? Because it's just that Jersey Royal Experiment, they had a potato called the Gem, which I sampled, and I found it an excellent potato, but it, it didn't pursue it. I think it's, it is a royal. I, I think I think it's just a royal called Gem. Is it? Mm, or a, you know, a small royal is called Jersey Pearl, or you you know, right. it can be the same potato. You can just call it. You can just call it something else. But they weren't royal, they weren't marketing it as a royal. They were they, they were going to market it as a gem under a different name. Would that matter? Ultimately, from your point of view, how important is it to keep the royal name? That's what I'm trying to get at. It's it, 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 it's very important to um, to um, maintain always maintain quality and always maintain a brand, any brand, is it? Uh, and, and and look after it. Right. That's something the states I know are quite um, keen to to ensure, which right. is which is good. From your point of view, do you export much to France? Uh, not that I, no, because it, because my, the, our exports go through Bartlett's. Right. So you don't actually know where their products finish up. They don't tell you. Or... I know where most of them go um, in a roundabout sort of way, um, but I, I, I couldn't give you the specifics. Because they've got their own set, and they're, they're not necessarily tied to supermarkets as some. Uh, Producers might have been. I don't. I don't understand the marketing of Bartlett's. Well, they're big enough to have their own marketing organisation, aren't they? Well, they. they yes, they are. They. They, they are. Um, they. They decide where they're, they're going in, in in cooperation with their customers. Right. They must have invested millions into the uh, into their plant. I mean, they've got a plant out there which is a, for uh, washing potatoes, but it's not operative all year round, is it? Is that, is that still a problem for growing agriculture, what to do in the winters? Well, that's, 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 that's a matter for Bartlett. It's not for me. It's not, not for agriculture generally, because that was always, the importation of labour, for example, was always an issue. But OK, if you brought people in for a couple of months, they disappeared. But does that still work? Can you still do that, to do the seasonal work? Oh, yes, there's... Um there's, there, are, there are farms, for example, we're down to a staff of two at the moment. Really? Um, from a, a peak of 22. Um, and we'll have staff coming back um, in two weeks' time. Right. Uh, one will come back, one will leave, and then we'll have a, an influx um, of about ooh, 12. Um, we'll be coming in around about the 15th of October for the standing. Oh, really? And they'll then leave around about third week in November. Because Binet used to bring in uh, several hundred Polish workers, I think about altogether about 900 workers or something, a phenomenal number of workers used to bring in for their potatoes. Mm. Um, obviously that is a potential Brexit problem, whether they'll be able to import them for, from the European countries. That's obviously not an issue if you're talking about small numbers of people. No, the, 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 the issues for, for importing labour simply simply um, they change so for example we as an industry might have to look at a work permit scheme but that wouldn't be a problem um, the main thing is if the workers want to come uh, and work and we want them um, you find a way of making that happen right. and it could and it could well be that we have to reintroduce work permits that's that's one you're confident that the team will be able to negotiate that you can have work permits that's the view I don't know if I'm confident that you know if they could or if they couldn't um but you know i'm confident we've got the best team that'll that'll, that'll be able to negotiate whatever's to be negotiated right if for any reason you couldn't bring in labor could jersey agriculture survive without imported labor i don't think so i don't think i'd want to carry on really in a more general sense do you think agriculture will survive I mean, obviously, something with this fields, they've got to be, something's growing, Alishaw's growing for the local market, but generally, can it survive? Agriculture needs to survive, um, otherwise you have starvation. So it depends how far you want to take that argument. Um, and Jersey would get rather um, frustrated if boats didn't sail for a week or 10 days. Um, so it is important. Um, and it's very important to maintain an agricultural uh, industry because there is so much, um, the industry is so dynamic in its skill set um, from, you know, uh, from mechanical engineering, civil engineering, 
computer, it, it, we cover such a range from branding through to marketing mm. through it's just just phenomenal well if, I'm, if you let me just have a little whiz round here i mean you can just see the sort of diversification just in here you've got in there a very nice workshop i can't see much of it but machinery all these wood woodworking timber activities all sorts of things which require skills don't they they yeah. require people who know what to do know how to weld know how to repair things mechanical things it is true agriculture is a very innovative industry isn't it and it's traditionally that isn't it oh very much so and um for me um, given that I've had access to the Young Farmers Club because my son is the chairman, um, perhaps a um, bit more than I otherwise would have, um, I was touched by discovering that the motto of the Young Farmers Club is, in growing we grow. Mm. And um, it's very true, and you can't sum it up any better than that. Unfortunately, one of the aspects about uh, farming is that it's, it's becoming necessary to have farming in order that there are green fields because we want to see green fields. It's not so much about the fact that they're actually growing something which is essential, which is food. Yes, that's, that's it's right. It's becoming a sort of like a, a stage set. Does yes. that worry you? Um, there are a few, things, a few things sort of mull in my mind um, when I, you know, see, see head, you know, when I see the way things are written. Um, that there is now a there's now an expectation by society for cheap food and by government. Food has to be cheap, 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 cheap. Um, it can't carry on uh, because um, farm incomes are ridiculously low, um, and something has to give. And um, it, well, it can't carry on. Well, we were in Guernsey recently and we were speaking to a farmer. He wouldn't give me an interview, but he said that he was, he was on a small team. He, he was lucky if he made two pounds an hour because he worked so many hours. And I don't know if it was as bad as that, but that's not a sustainable industry, is no, it? No, and it, it's, not, it, it, it's not dissimilar on the farms either. With, with, really? um, no, it's not. That, that, um, that's Because you've got this machine we're standing in front of, no, a nice tractor. How much was one of those to buy? Well, the nice ones are actually not here. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, we've got... Uh, we, we don't have any new tractors. We've, our tractor's, you know, seven, eight years old now. Right. Um, and um, it's, it's going to be time to um, reinvest um, at some point. Um, but at the moment, we're keeping everything going. But, you know, the, the farming incomes are, are, cha are challenged, that's for sure. Right. Um, which is why we're trying to come up with some new ideas ourselves. There is some grant paid to local farmers if uh, I forget the field something scheme, but that depends upon them being maintained. Or so, so pollution is one of the big issues at the moment for farming, and the, the fields have to be to a certain standard to get the grant. I forget what the grant is called. Is that a problem if the grants, because they were talking, uh, Mr. Lucy the other day was talking about not having grants, would that be an issue? Or are they not, not that important? What um we currently have the single area payment. The single area payment, that's what I'm trying to think of. And um, there are criteria that you have to meet. Um, but the, the new policy, which is out for consultation at the moment, um, is talking in terms of having a, uh, a three-tier system. Right. So that those farms, so that everyone would have to be, uh, to, get, to get any sort of payment at all for anything, Whatever that may be, you have to be at tier one, and then for um, for for enhanced payments, you have to be at tier two. But th this is these tiers are for agricult for for businesses that are part of assured schemes. So by virtue of you being in an assured scheme or a, um, a certification scheme, um, you you would qualify for um, for for money from from the government. Right. Um, if you're not in one of these schemes, you won't qualify. Right. Um, and so that is to ensure that the money is targeted to those farmers that meet those requirements. So that the, the, the minimum level would be a particular scheme, and then they'd use another scheme, which is a bit more enhanced, um, that you would have to... So that's another hoop to jump through um, in order to qualify for, it, for any other payments. And, and I think that kind of thinking is also being looked at in the UK as well. Right. Um, and it's, it, it's, um, it's got merit. It's, right. it's got merit. Because um, they get these uh, grants in the UK for 
not growing stuff on fields and all this sort of rather strange uh, EU payments, government payments. I don't yes. know what you mean. Yeah, that, yeah, they did. They they did that. That was the previous schemes, and and as a result of all the schemes that have gone before, those included, you learn from them. Right. And so I think this is why this this. Uh, the latest thinking is, and what's out for consultation is is is, is, is to have the tiers, um, and um, the fact that the farms are have gone through the very rigorous um, uh, cross examination through through the system, uh, which we have to pay um, to have to be vetted. Right. Um, then automatically you qualify for government money because you've pro you've proved yourself to be worthy of the money because you are you know you're proving that you're you're you're, you're applying the right amounts of uh, you're, you're farming to best practice do you think that might deter some farmers they oh, we're going to throw in the towel we can't while they get to a certain age i want to retire possibly yeah sell up pack in yeah 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 is that something you hear people say uh, yes right yes that's simmering under that that's 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 um well, you know, um, that, that's, that's, that's always in a farmer's mind. Because it's a bit like tourism. It gets to the stage, tourism, hotels, bed spaces, get to the number where it's not viable anymore because there's not enough beds to have the planes to fly in to support the restaurants. So it's knock-on effect, isn't it? And it's exactly the same with agriculture. We may not realise it, but there has to be a certain number of farmers growing stuff, doesn't there? Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, and Jersey does consume an awful lot of... Um, uh, Fruit, veg, meat, bread. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and that's for sure. Nobody I can speak to, I don't know if you know about dairy, but this idea that you can prevent milk coming in. Now, I know it's not directly a European Union arrangement, but is, are you optimistic, are you fairly confident that that will continue, that they will be able to stop milk being brought into Jersey? Oh, yeah, yeah, no? yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything you don't think is optimistic as far as Brexit? I'm, I'm a bit of a Jeremiah on Brexit. I, I fear the worst, but so it's, it's nice to hear somebody who's confident. But is there anything about it which you, does worry you? Not really, not really. Um, I've got far bigger things to worry about okay. as a farmer. Um, the weather is, is, and, and everything that throws at us and all the challenges generally. Brexit is... Um, not something that is, uh, you know, it's not, you know, it's not, um, it's not big in my mind. And, and I, th th there's always opportunities. Well, I terms. suppose you look at it, you are here, the, far, the farm's not going to go anywhere. Somebody's going to have to do something with it, aren't they? That's, just, well, that's I mean, the reality, it, isn't it? It's, it's, it, you know, every cloud is a silver lining and there's always opportunity. So right. um, we, we have to be optimistic. We wouldn't be, you know, you have to be an optimist to, to farm anyway. Yes. So, um, but, so we, we're always optimistic. The glass is never half empty, it's always half full. This year, as far as you understand it, agriculturally speaking, has this been a good year? No, it's been very challenging indeed. And, really? Uh, yeah. And um, it's, uh, we've got to really uh, knuckle down and, uh, and um, improve things. Okay, well, if, and anything else you want to tell me, but it's been very yeah. interesting talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.